The extractor is contained in the front end of the bolt. It grips the rim of the cartridge and holds it firmly against the face of the bolt. When the bolt carrier and bolt move to the rear, the extractor gripping the cartridge case withdraws it from the chamber. The action of the gas will be repeated. When the round is fired and gas pressure pushes the projectile through the barrel, a small portion of this pressure enters the gas port and passes through the gas tube into the cylinder between the bolt carrier and the bolt. Here, gas drives the bolt carrier rearward, unlocking the bolt and extracting the cartridge case. When the cartridge case is extracted from the chamber, the next operation can occur, ejecting. The bolt contains an ejector and ejector spring which are compressed by the base of the cartridge. When the spent cartridge case is entirely clear of the chamber, the ejector spring forces the ejector forward. This action ejects the cartridge case out of the rifle through the ejection port. With each firing, the bolt carrier and bolt are driven rearward by the force of gas. This rearward movement, in turn, initiates the sequence of unlocking, extracting, and ejecting. During the rearward movement of the bolt carrier group, another action occurs, cocking. As the bolt carrier group moves rearward, it overrides the hammer and forces it down into the receiver, compressing the hammer spring. The lower hook of the hammer is engaged with the disconnect. When the trigger is released, the hammer slips from the disconnect and is caught by the nose of the trigger. The weapon is cocked. Another simultaneous action occurs during the rearward movement of the bolt carrier group. This action is called feeding. As the bolt carrier group clears the top of the magazine and expels the empty cartridge case, a new round is pushed into the path of the bolt by the upward thrust of the magazine follower and spring. The action spring guide, which is pushing on the rear of the bolt carrier group, is forced rearward by the bolt carrier group, compressing the action spring. The bolt carrier group reaches its rearmost position when the rear of the action spring guide contacts the rear of the receiver extension. Now the compressed action spring expands. This drives the action spring guide assembly forward with enough force to drive the bolt carrier group forward toward the chamber. This initiates the next action in the cycle of functioning, chambering. As the bolt carrier group moves forward, the face of the bolt strips a new round from the magazine and moves it toward the chamber. As the extractor grips the rim of the cartridge, the ejector and ejector spring are forced back into the bolt by the base of the cartridge as the round is seated in the chamber. Now one final action is required to complete the cycle, locking. The forward movement of the bolt ceases when the bolt locking lugs pass between the barrel extension locking lugs and the round is fully chambered. When the bolt carrier enters the last half inch of its forward movement, the bolt cam pin emerges from the guide channel in the upper receiver, moves on the cam track, rotating the bolt counterclockwise. This locks the bolt to the barrel extension. Locking the bolt completes the cycle of operation. The weapon is ready to be fired again. When the selector lever is on semi-automatic, as it has been during this review of the cycle of functioning, a single round is fired each time the trigger is pressed. When the selector lever is moved to the auto position, the weapon functions in a slightly different manner. Automatic fire begins when the trigger is pressed to release the hammer. The hammer strikes the firing pin and fires the first round. The bolt carrier recoils and moves rearward, overriding the hammer and depressing it to the cock position. At this time, the center cam of the selector lever prevents the disconnect from engaging the hammer as it does in semi-automatic fire. 
Simultaneously, another cam on the selector lever rotates the automatic sear forward which catches the upper hook of the hammer. The automatic sear holds the hammer in cocked position until it is struck by a shoulder on the bottom of the bolt carrier. This releases the hammer. As long as the trigger remains depressed, the nose fails to engage the hammer and automatic fire continues until the magazine is empty. However, when the trigger is released during firing, the nose of the trigger moves up, engaging the hammer. The cycle of automatic fire is stopped until the trigger is pressed again. All other operations in automatic fire are the same as in semi-automatic fire. These are firing, unlocking, extracting, ejecting, cocking, feeding, chambering, and locking. These separate but interrelated operations complete the cycle of functioning of the XM-16 E1 rifle. Remember, the XM-61 is a gas-operated, air-cooled, shoulder-fired weapon capable of semi-automatic or automatic fire. It fires 5.56 millimeter ammunition fed from a 20-round magazine. The weight of the loaded aluminum magazine is seven-tenths of a pound. The weight of the loaded weapon is 7.6 pounds. Its maximum effective range is 460 meters. The straight line construction helps to assure accuracy of fire by reducing muzzle climb. In military situations requiring a high degree of individual mobility, together with the most possible small arms firepower per man, the XM-16E1 rifle has proved its value.